Although Catholicism is a sun god representation of the mysteries, and Islam is a moon god representation, it's interesting to cross-reference them to point out some commonalities that betray a shared origin. Since the end goal of Satan is to undo the scattering of Babylon and return the world to a single one-world religion, it is these kinds of commonalities that he will play upon to bring that unity at the end of time. Not just with Catholicism and Islam, but with all religion that stems from Babylon. For example, let's compare the habit that Catholic nuns wear with the hijab that Islamic women are expected to wear. They're almost identical. Also, in both religions, people are taught to pray with beads. Just as Muhammad is said to have received his revelation in a cave, Mary is also depicted as living in caves or grottos in Catholicism. As I've already pointed out, this practice links him to the underground Babylonian worship of Nebo, who is said to have come out of the hole in the ground, and puts us in mind of Revelation 13.11 that talks about a beast coming out from the earth. The mysteries were often celebrated in caves or grottos, and this explains the origin of this practice today and why revelations from Satan are so often given in the darkness. In Fatima, Mary is in a cave. In Lourdes, Mary is in a cave. The Pope and Catholic followers enter into these caves to venerate her and thus perpetuate the Babylonian system. Today we may also associate grottos with the secular Christmas character, Santa Claus. Department stores around the world create Santa's grottos around Christmas time and invite kids to enter into it to receive a gift. Again, this mimics a practice that has gone on for millennia. Although we've briefly looked at holidays already, we may revisit them in depth at the end of the study. Catholicism and Islam stand side by side around the world, often in places that were originally pagan in nature. Cathedrals and mosques are frequently built either next to each other or the two buildings are incorporated into one. Cordoba in Spain is perhaps the most famous example of a cathedral mosque that was originally one and is now the other. It doesn't matter that the building was once consecrated to Catholicism but is now consecrated to Islam because both serve the same system. We have noted the sun symbolism in Catholicism. Even though Islam is the moon god version, they still have some sun imagery like on the ceiling of the King Abdullah Mosque in Jordan. Not entirely different to the concept behind St. Peter's Dome in the Basilica. The sounds of the religions are also similarly solemn. This is the sound of an Islamic call to prayer. <laughs> Now compare it with the sound of a Gregorian chant. They are both similarly haunting, mournful and melancholic. Both religions also make use of the telltale satanic all-seeing eye. This is a typical example from an Islamic taxi cab where they are used as a charm to ward off evil and for protection. You will also unsurprisingly find this symbol in Catholicism. This is one example found on the confessional at the Cathedral Milano in Italy. To the ancient Egyptians, the right eye represented the sun and the left eye represented the moon. That is why in Egyptian forms of the eye, it is surrounded by makeup that normally identifies it as the right eye, the eye of the sun god. Osiris or Horus to them. In this example, note the sun rays representing the supposed illumination that comes from the eye. One of the great ancient Egyptian temples was the Luxor Temple. Helena Blavatsky, an important occult figure that we'll look at later, said that within such temples, obscene acts of homosexuality were conducted as a form of worship to Set. Now the remains of the Luxor temple still stand to this day, and within it you will find a multitude of phallic symbols that echo its original purpose. At the entrance, you will of course find the Asherah pole or obelisk. What is perhaps a little more surprising is that built into the Luxor temple is a mosque. Some Catholics plainly see the similarities with Islam and are looking for a shared future based on the truth that they have the same origin. 
Vatican insider Dr. David Malachi Martin said that on the basis of a personal message from Mary to Pope John Paul II, he believed that there will come a day when the heart of Islam, already attuned to the figures of Christ and Christ's mother Mary, will receive the illumination it needs, a second Fatima, in which they will recognize him as God's true vicar on earth. Then with fellow travellers like the Church of England, the Episcopal Church and others of like mind, the Pope could be worshipped as the infallible Holy Father by over one half of the world's population. This idea of ecumenism or unity between religions is gaining a lot of momentum in the world today and behind it is the fact that Satan wants to reverse the scattering of Babylon and bring the whole world together again under his mystery religion. Given that the false religions of the world share the same root, they all have commonalities which are to be highlighted to achieve this end. The idea is to bring the world under the headship of the Pope because he is the earthly head of the mysteries. Because of Muhammad's Catholic influence, Muslims already believe in Mary's Immaculate Conception and Virgin Birth. So high is their view of Mary that the Quran concludes she must be a goddess in Christianity. It therefore teaches that Christians believe in the Father, the Mother and the Son. This is an error that comes by observing Catholicism's overemphasis on Mary as a deity. In fact, Father, Mother and Son is the Babylonian Trinity. The Christian Trinity is Father, Son and Spirit. The Islamic system of salvation is one of justification by works, which is the same as Catholicism and all false religion, in fact. The Quran teaches that on the day of judgment, good and bad works will be weighed up in a balance to decide whether or not someone goes to heaven or hell. This is just like the scales of Anubis or St. Michael in Rome. In Islamic states there is no division between religion and politics. This merger of secular and sacred is similar to the Church of Rome, where the sovereign pontiff is both head of the religion and a reigning monarch. A final similarity with the Church of Rome is persecution, firstly of Jews and secondly of Christians. This is an indicator of Satan's presence. The Jews were granted full citizenship of Rome in 212 AD. However, when the empire became Catholicized under Constantine 100 years later, this toleration of Jews declined and persecution began. This was the start of a long history of terrible persecution of Jews by the Church of Rome. Likewise, we have already seen how Muhammad developed a hatred of the Jews and took to attacking and massacring them. In conclusion, we should be careful not to bow to the pressure of the politically correct lobby and blaspheme the name of God by placing him on a level with Allah, or to even suggest that they are one and the same under different names. Allah is Baal. We should also be clear in refusing to compromise with Catholicism and its Babylonian ways.